California is one of the largest grape growing regions in the world. The Golden State's abundant sunshine and mild Mediterranean climate make it an ideal location for growing grapes. And the wines that come from these vineyards are prized the world over. A new invader that has the potential to cause serious damage now threatens the state's wine, raisin, and table grape industries. It has already helped decimate the grape industries in Florida and Texas, and now it is California's turn to deal with this menace. This new intruder is an insect known as the glassy wing sharpshooter. A native of the southeastern United States, scientists believe it was brought into Southern California in 1989 through infected nursery plants. Since its introduction, it has spread rapidly. So far, it's been found in 15 California counties, mainly in Southern California and the Southern San Joaquin Valley. Well, we're here in a Ventura County lemon orchard. Uh, an orchard is about five years old. And the concern here locally with agriculture uh, has been a new, a relatively new introduced pest species, the glassy wing sharpshooter. Uh, it occurred here in Ventura County uh, about 10 years ago you know, when we first saw it. And uh, it has developed its populations over this last 10 years and has reached uh, some very, very large levels to where in young lemon trees such as this one here, uh, we can have populations of 50 to 100 or more insects uh, per tree. The adult insect is almost half an inch in length and is dark brown to black in color with a lighter underside. The upper part of the glassy wing sharpshooter's head is marked with ivory or yellow spots that are visible when viewed up close. The insect gets its name from the semi-transparent wings on its back that are laced with reddish veins and the characteristic side-to-side -side motion it sometimes exhibits, similar to a sharpshooter aiming at a target. Glassy wing sharpshooters are voracious feeders, and they are not picky. They're known to feed on over 130 different types of plants. These pests usually feed on the stem of a plant rather than the leaves. They have remarkably strong mouth parts that are able to penetrate down inside the stem to the part of the plant that conducts water from the roots to the leaves. This tissue is known as the xylem. Because the fluid within the xylem is very low in nutrients, the glassy wing sharpshooter needs to consume large amounts of it in order to get enough energy to live and grow. When feeding, it excretes this liquid as a stream of small droplets that rain down to surfaces below after filtering out essential nutrients. In areas where the glassy wing sharpshooter populations are very large, a mist made up of these droplets can actually be seen. As this watery excrement dries, it leaves behind a white residue. The real threat from the glassy wing sharpshooter is not from the damage it does directly, but from a disease that it helps spread. The glassy wing sharpshooter can carry a bacterium that causes Pierce's disease, which is devastating to grape plants. Pierce's disease can kill a grapevine within one to two years of infection, and there is, as yet, no known cure. When we talk about an insect vector, that is an insect in the case of glassy wing sharpshooter here, which actually is able to acquire or pick up the disease causing agent, in this case a bacterium, from a host plant that it's feeding on, pick that bacterium up, carry it with it to uninfected plants, and transmit then that bacterium to these uninfected plants, creating an infection in those plants. And subsequently, uh, should they uh, be plants that would be susceptible to a disease, uh, then the disease develops and uh, in the case of grapes for instance uh, Pierce's disease is the disease of concern and so this insect is capable of picking up the bacterium that causes Pierce's disease of grape from uh, plants outside the vineyard or even from grapevines in the vineyard picking that bacterium up carrying it within its mouth parts to an uninfected grapevine and transmitting then or infecting that grapevine with the bacterium and that's uh, what we mean when we say vector uh, so this insect is a very significant vector of a number of different uh, fatal plant diseases the bacterium that is responsible for Pierce's disease is known as Xylella fastidiosa it lives and multiplies in the water conducting tissue of the plant. Eventually, the bacterium population builds to the point that the xylem becomes blocked, effectively cutting off the plant's water supply. 
That is why the first symptoms of Pierce's disease mimic those of a plant with water stress. The grape leaves appear to be scorched and can change colors in a variety of patterns, ranging from brown to yellow to red. Chronically infected plants exhibit delayed or stunted growth in the spring, and later in the season, grape clusters may shrivel up and dry. Well, the symptoms are of a gradual but very prolonged and very consistent uh, shortage of water. And the cells in the leaf that run short of water turn yellow. They may develop some pigmentation, like red colors. And this tends to occur on the outer margin of the leaf and gradually move inward until eventually you, you end up with something starts out like this, comes in like this, eventually you end up with that. And what it will do is this leaf will completely dry off, but it leaves the stem of the, the leaf attached, called the petiole. And that's very characteristic of Pierce's disease. Another thing that's quite characteristic is this very sharp margin between where the bark matures and turns brown and where it's still green and immature. That boundary in Pierce's disease plants, for some reason, is uh, often very sharp and distinctive looking. Young vines tend to be more susceptible to this disease than mature ones, and while all varieties of commercial grapes are at risk of infection, some varieties are more tolerant than others. Well, all the European uh, varieties are susceptible to one degree or another. Uh, and when the vines are very young, these differences uh, between varieties are not very pronounced. But as they become older, you see really pronounced differences. A variety like Chenin Blanc or White Riesling, Riesling um, is quite tolerant, doesn't show symptoms. The bacteria seem to spread more slowly, and that probably, in my mind, accounts for most of their resistance in, in, in the field level. Varieties like Pinot Noir, Barbera, Chardonnay are highly susceptible, and you consistently will find the greatest de degree of damage and the highest occurrence of the disease near hot spots in those kind of varieties. Pierce's disease is not new to California. In fact, it has been here for over a century. Before the arrival of the glassy wing sharpshooter, the Pierce's disease bacterium was carried by other types of sharpshooters common to the state. These other sharpshooters only feed on the more tender shoots of grape vines that are usually pruned away in the winter. By cutting away the infected parts of the vine, the damage caused by the bacterium is greatly limited. The glassy wing sharpshooter, on the other hand, feeds on older wood that is never pruned away. This allows the infection to spread until it kills the entire vine. The glassy wing sharpshooter is also a strong flyer and can travel deep into the vineyards in order to feed. The green and blue-green sharpshooters, on the other hand, have a limited flight range and tend to stay close to their preferred habitats. The blue-green sharpshooter favors the plants found along the banks of rivers and streams, while the green sharpshooter is commonly found in lush grasses. The main strategy of dealing with Pierce's disease has been up to now to avoid um, having the vector enter your vineyard. Um, and we've narrowed that down for example, Napa Valley, keep the vector out of your vineyard in April and May. After April, um, you can pretty much uh, ignore sharpshooter populations because infections may then uh, will not be able to reach a part of the plant in time to avoid being pruned out in the winter or survive the winter. Uh, with a glassy wing sharpshooter, we think this may be changing, and that may be at least part of the explanation why we see such rapid disease growth, because uh, it will feed much lower on the vine. If I could uh, illustrate, I mean, they can feed on this woody portion of the vine and survive just well, just fine. Uh, if they put the bacteria here, that doesn't get pruned out, and they put that bacteria there in June, July, perhaps even August, the chances that that vine will still be infected the next year, that is, the bacteria will survive the winter, are pretty high. And what time of year does the bacteria appear in the new growth so that the insects can pick it up and spread it to vine to vine? That generally doesn't happen until June. So in our past history, we now realize that the vine to vine spread of the bacteria has not been consequential in establishing very many cases of what we call chronic infection. 
infections, infections that are going to survive the winter. If they did survive the winter, we probably would see exponential growth of the disease. Now, as far as um, control measures, you just want to avoid vulnerability. If you can't avoid being next to a source of vectors like along a river bank, uh, use varieties that are uh, less susceptible to Pierce's disease. Not the uh, in the past, uh, insecticidal control of vectors in riparian areas were allowed. In the Central Valley, that never made any sense and was never very effective. There, the simple solution is don't have the weeds or the environments near the vineyard that will produce the vector. Because uh, most of the spread was limited generally to 100 meters from a vector source area like a pasture or riparian vegetation. The Temecula Valley of Southern California has been particularly hard hit by Pierce's disease due to the glassy wing sharpshooter. Roughly 25 percent of that region's grapevines have been killed in just the past three years. Growers in the Central Valley and coastal regions are worried of the disease spreading to their vines with the advancing wave of glassy wing sharpshooters. Pierce's disease appears to only occur in warmer climates, and it has not been found north of California in the west. But researchers still don't know what tolerance level the bacterium has for low winter temperatures. They are also looking into the effect temperature has on the glassy wing sharpshooter. There are a lot of unanswered questions about how far north it can spread. Um, the, cla the glassy wing sharpshooter really represents sort of a classic case in uh, invading new species that are occupying new territory. Most of the introductions are failures and go extinct. Uh, some make a breakthrough and start to expand and survive from year to year, and we don't really understand that process. Uh, we certainly know that it's not too cold in the winter in terms of absolute low temperatures to have much effect on the sharpshooter. Um, I think a larger question with regard to temperature is along the coast, is there enough uh, temperature spread out, high temperature spread out over a sufficient length of time to allow for the development of two complete generations of this glassy wing sharpshooter per year? If it can only uh, develop one generation, let's say in Sonoma Valley uh, per year, it's unlikely to reach really high numbers. On the other side of that, we, we think that probably very low numbers of this insect may cause really high levels of damage if the disease vines are already in place in the vineyard, as they are in our North Coast vineyards already. The glassy wing sharpshooter and the bacteria it carries don't just damage grapevines, they're responsible for a number of other plant diseases. For example, the same bacterium that causes Pierce's disease in grapes also causes a disease known as almond leaf scorch in almond trees. This disease causes the leaves of almond trees to turn brown and die. Eventually, the entire tree can be affected. Almond, the symptoms are very similar to what they look like in grape. Uh, you don't get this immaturity of the bark, uh, simply a withering and yellowing of the leaves followed by its drying up and turning brown. Um, again, among all varieties, some are very tolerant and others are very susceptible. Uh, we think that glassy wing sharpshooter is going to increase the spread of almond leaf scorch tremendously because unlike our traditional vectors, glassy wing sharpshooter loves to feed on trees, particularly in the winter and, and early spring. And uh, we already know that it will feed on almond during this period. And for almond, we suspect also that the early spring and spring months are really critical for establishing chronic infections. The bacteria doesn't reach as high a population in almond, uh, and yet we get symptoms of this scorching much earlier in almond. That's curious and something we don't understand. Another strain of Xylella fastidiosa causes a similar disease in oleander plants. Oleander leaf scorch begins with the tips of the leaves turning yellow. Symptoms then spread to the twigs and branches, and generally within about two years, the entire plant dies. Uh, over here we have um, an oleander that uh, has the disease. 
This portion of the plant has died of the disease, actually some weeks ago, and uh, this new side shoot looks to be, for the moment, healthy. But I can already tell by the little yellow color appearing at the edges of these leaves, and the fact they're smaller than they should be, that the bacteria are already occupying this part of the plant. And uh, whereas normally, the, here is yet another infected plant, but one that hasn't really started to show symptoms. Oleanders are perhaps the most significant shrubs in California. They're found in about 20% of the home gardens in the state and are a major component in the landscaping of golf courses, parks, and commercial properties. Over 2,000 miles of California's freeways are lined with these flowering plants, and it is estimated that it would cost the state over $52 million if they all were destroyed. This has been devastating to oleanders in Southern California, and as again as this insect and the disease progress uh, northward through the state, uh, we expect to see significant losses in oleander plantings in, in the rest of the state. Glassy wing sharpshooters grow to unusually high numbers when they infest citrus groves. And while they do not currently pose a great danger to the state's citrus crop, there is serious concern that they may eventually carry a disease that kills citrus trees. The citrus strain of the Xylella fastidiosa bacterium has already infected over 60 million trees in South America. And if it were to spread to California, the results would be devastating. Controlling the spread of the glassy wing sharpshooter is a top priority for the state of California. There is broad bipartisan support in the fight among members of Congress and the California State Legislature. And so far, federal, state, and local governments have committed over $60 million toward the effort. A statewide program using a variety of strategies has been put in place to combat the glassy wing sharpshooter and Pierce's disease. A monitoring, trapping, and reporting program is currently underway across the state to determine the extent of the insect's spread and to quickly respond to new areas of infestation. An educational outreach program is also in place to teach growers, farm workers, nursery people, and others how to identify this pest and the symptoms of infection. The California Department of Food and Agriculture is also inspecting nursery stock and bulk grapes that are transported throughout the state in order to prevent the spread of the glassy wing sharpshooter by this route. Commercial nurseries in infested areas of Southern California are required to have their plants carefully inspected for any sign of the glassy wing sharpshooter or its egg masses before these plants can be shipped to non-infested counties. These shipments are inspected again by the County Agricultural Commissioner's Office when they arrive at their destination just to be safe. This insect, the glassy wing sharpshooter, uh, has gotten its start here in California, here in Ventura County, and now is proceeding to move uh, throughout the state. Uh, primarily, it has been moved as egg masses. Uh, and these egg masses are laid on the undersides of uh, relatively new leaf tissue uh, on a number of different plant species. Citrus happens to be one of the favorite plants uh, that it hosts on. But there are a number of other plant species, uh, including all the pruna species, such as apricot or plum, uh, nectarines. It will lay eggs into some of our native plants here locally in Ventura County. Laurel sumac happens to be one that it uh, likes a lot. Uh, there are also a number of ornamental plant species, uh, such as um, uh, philodendron and uh, ash trees and uh, eucalyptus, uh, elms. Uh, also trees such as macadamia, which are used as dooryard trees, ornamental trees here in the county, uh, are excellent hosts for a glass swimming sharpshooter. And the sharpshooter not only feeds on these plants, but then will also lay uh, lots of egg masses so it can continue its life cycle. Uh, the insect is being moved not so much on its own. It can fly, but it prefers to fly from one plant canopy to the next. Uh, unlike birds or migratory birds that will fly you know, many miles or hundreds or thousands of miles, this this insect will prefers to just move from plant to plant on its own. However, because of the fact that it lays these egg masses, particularly fresh egg masses such as this, that are very difficult to see in plant leaf tissue, it's very easy then for this material and this insect as an egg 
or an egg mass to be moved in nursery stock or any kind of container plant so that as people move uh, their home from Southern California or move from their apartment or condominium in Southern California where they may have some potted plants which are host to glass and wing sharpshooter here in Southern California and move those to locations further north this insect can very easily be moved. It can also be moved as egg masses on commercial nursery stock and that is why there are significant quarantines right now in Southern California on the movement of any nursery stock out of Southern California into the landscape industries uh, in the central and northern parts of the state. Uh, again, significant movement of this insect can occur as egg masses on plant leaf material. So it is very important uh, not to move any uninspected plant material from the known range of this insect, which is currently here in Southern California and into Kern County and a few other locations uh, in Central and Northern California, it is very important not to move live plant material with the possibility of having egg masses in it uh, out of these areas and into uninfested areas. Uh, this will give uh, researchers hopefully the, the necessary time to come up with some solutions to what uh, really is a statewide problem for all of us. Targeted ground spraying of insecticides has been used in some heavily infested areas but state officials do not consider large-scale aerial spraying a viable option. Many researchers believe that one method for reducing the glassy wing sharpshooter population in California is through biological control. At the forefront of this attack are three species of tiny parasitic wasps, one native to California and the others native to Texas and Mexico. These wasps, which are only about a sixteenth of an inch in length, do not sting or bother people. They lay eggs of their own inside the egg masses of the glassy wing sharpshooter. When the wasp eggs hatch, the larvae that emerge feed on the glassy wing sharpshooter's eggs. In summer months, these wasps can destroy up to 95% of the sharpshooter eggs that they encounter. In 2001, scientists at the University of California, the California Department of Food and Agriculture, and the U.S. Department of Agriculture worked together on a program of rearing over 125,000 parasitic wasps. The wasps were released in eight California counties infested with a glassy wing sharpshooter. Researchers are still monitoring the effectiveness of this biological control program. Researchers are working on several fronts to quell the advance of the glassy wing sharpshooter and the threat it poses to California agriculture. Scientists have deciphered the genetic DNA sequence of the bacterium that causes Pierce's disease. The information they've gathered will be very helpful in devising new methods for combating the disease. Scientists at the University of California are hard at work determining the genetic DNA sequence of domestic grapes with the hope the information will be useful in developing disease-resistant varieties. Our research on Pierce's disease uh, deals with an area of science called genomics. And uh, genomics generally uh, is the application of uh, biological science, uh, engineering technology, and computer science to sequence genes and understand the function of these genes at a relatively high throughput level. Our interest in particular is to identify genes in vitis vinifera, cultivated grapes, as well as in wild species that have resistance to uh, Pierce's disease, and to find genes that are correlated with resistance. Once you have that kind of information, you have genes that in fact are responsible for resistance, you can think about employing other strategies, anywhere from classical breeding, which this sort of information could be used to facilitate, all the way up through genetic engineering and a range of possibilities in between. So basically what we're doing is generating information about why certain grape plants are resistant and why certain pla grape plants are susceptible and trying to understand the genetic basis. UC researchers are also investigating whether boosting the levels of naturally occurring elements such as zinc, manganese, copper, and iron can help prevent infection in grapevines. In the laboratory, Compounds of these essential plant nutrients have been found to be toxic to bacteria at certain concentrations. Another avenue researchers are looking into is the use of other bacteria that might be introduced into grapevines to attack the bacterium that causes Pierce's disease. This form of biological control would reproduce on its own, 
and, ironically, could even be spread from plant to plant by the glassy wing sharpshooter itself. The University of Florida has been looking at ways of developing grape plants that are resistant to Pierce's disease. They have received a patent for a gene that allows the grape plant to produce a polypeptide, or mini-protein, which kills bacteria, including the strain that causes Pierce's disease. Early results with these altered genes are encouraging, but the technique has yet to be applied to grapes in the field. I think it's important to understand uh, where the technology is at. In grape grapes in this particular case, we're talking about the introduction of a single gene, which based on a number of reasonable arguments is likely to be safe uh, for human consumption, although that needs to be tested for sure. Uh, but there are a number of other issues to make sure that the presence of this protein in grapes has efficacy or is efficient for control of Pierce's disease. So uh, we're talking eight to ten years minimum prior to commercialization and the sorts of things that need to be tested the grape plants need to be put in the field and tested under field conditions. Typically, this class of peptides, when expressed in plants, confers partial resistance to bacterial pathogens. And that's true in the case of this protein in grapes as well. So there's a question whether partial resistance, the, the ability to delay symptom development, for example, will be adequate for controlling Pierce's disease. My personal perspective on uh, this patent and, and the finding is that it's certainly something that needs to be pursued aggressively. It has promise, but it's only one in a list, uh, a long list of avenues that need to be pursued so that down the road we have enough tools in our pocket to make rational choices about controlling Pierce's disease. This is one of the early and promising developments. By engaging in a multi-pronged attack against the glassy wing sharpshooter and the disease organism it carries, scientists hope to control the spread of this pest and mitigate the potential damage to California's multi-billion dollar agricultural industries. No single approach is likely to be successful on its own, but with a coordinated effort among researchers, government officials, and growers, perhaps the damage can be stopped before it's too late. <laughs>